Hi, I'm Lucas. I'm a PhD student in Germany. I've taught hundreds of people how to use Rome research for academia, for writing papers and dissertations, and for thinking better. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Zotero inside Rome research. Now, why would you want this? Because Zotero is a fantastic reference manager, the best in my opinion, and because it makes collecting metadata of the things you read, right? Like things like the author, uh, the year, publication, um, location, what journal it is, that sort of thing. Collecting that Zotero makes really, really easy. It also creates site keys for you. And site keys are unique identifiers for a given paper that are really memorable and that you can then use in your writing and which later get automatically turned into nicely formatted references without any more work on your part, right? So that's why Zotero is awesome. And by using Zotero inside Rome Research, that means you can have access to all the metadata, to the site keys, just where you need it while writing inside Rome. And so what you need is Zotero, you need Rome Research, and you need a Rome Research extension. And I'm going to link all of these resources below this video. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, take you step by step through how setting this app works. And by the end of this video, you'll know what to do, how to use it, um, and then what you can do with it. So let's get into it. All right, so what do you need for this? The first thing is that in your own room research graph, I'm here in the public Cortex Futura graph, you go to the Rome.js page and you create a block that says Zotero integration. You can call it whatever you want, but I find this useful. Um, and below that, you create a block like this that has um, two curly brackets, then two square brackets and links to Rome JS page. And when you click out of that, you get this big, scary, yes, I know what I'm doing button. We'll get to that in a second. But under this block with a big scary button, you create um, a new JavaScript code block. Don't be scared, it's super easy. Um, and the way you do it is that you indent a new block and then you type forward slash and just a J and that will bring up JavaScript code block. You hit enter when you hit enter and there you paste the code of the extension. And I'm going to show you where you can get that code now. So what we do is we head over to the documentation for the extension. Um, again, the link is under this video. Um, it's made by Alex Luke. Um, sorry, Alex. Um, and it's fantastic. You go to this page and then you go to basic setup and you copy the code that's here into this code block like I've done here, right? And here you have a couple of things to fill out and I'm going to show you where to get the things you need to fill out. So you need the Zotero API key, then you, you need the data URI, which requires your Zotero user ID, and then the params field, I would suggest you leave blank because that is going to give you your whole Zotero library. Now, where do you get the API key or your Zotero user ID? You do get that from Zotero itself. So you head over to zotero.org and you click on login and then you fill out your username or email and your password if you already have uh, Zotero 
uh, online account or you can register for a free account. Um, once you've registered, you need to connect this to your Zotero app and you do that by going to preferences and then sync and there you can link your account here. You also want to make sure that you have the Better BibTech extension installed for Zotero. Um, I'm going to link a video on how to set that up and install that somewhere around here. And you want to make sure that you have um, auto pinning side keys activated. Now, this is a little bit um, technical maybe, but the idea is that you need something, you need to see for every source that you have this little red pin icon next to the side key. And um, usually uh, you have to do that yourself um, and you can do that by right clicking on any given source and then selecting better BibTech and then pinning um, the BibTech key. Um, and sometimes you will have to unpin the BibTech key um, if the side key isn't generated um, the way you want it to, then it makes sense to unpin it, change it and pin it again. But only when it's pinned can the Zotero extension in Rome actually retrieve the side key. So that's key. Um, how do you activate this? Um, you activate it by going to Zotero preferences um, and then to advanced config editor and you will have to accept the risk it's super easy um, and then you set auto pin extension Zotero translator better BibTeX auto pin delay and you set a value um, here you click on modify two means after two seconds it will auto pin the side key. You can set that to five, 10, whatever. Basically it determines when Zotero will fix the side key um, for you. And then when you sync your Zotero library to the online version, this side key will um, tra be transported to the online uh, library and then the Zotero extension in Rome can use it. So again, you go to um, Zotero preferences, then advanced config editor, and there you search for auto pin and then set the auto pin delay to something like one, two, three, four seconds. Um, and that's all you need to do there. Now, back to Zotero, let's log in. And that's my username and password and log in to Zotero. Now, this is a demo library. That's why it's empty. I'm going to show you how that looks with a full one in just a second. But when you're in your um, Zotero library, you click on your username and then on settings. And on the settings page, you go to feeds slash API, and that's where you find your user ID. And you copy this over, and then you go back to your own research graph and put this here to into the data URI field between the two slashes. And then you create a new private key. And I'm going to call this uh, Rome Zotero, it will get um, library access, so it can read all the things I have in my Zotero library. Um, I think I'll also give it um, notes access and it won't write anything to your Zotero library, it's just going to read stuff so I don't have to enable that. Um, it will get no permissions for groups. I don't use groups in Zotero, so I can't give you advice on that. Um, 
and then you click down here, um, you click save key. And this is going to give you a save key, um, a, your, and this is going to give you your API key. Obviously, you should keep this secret, right? Because with this key, everyone can read your data which is why I'm using a demo account because I don't want you to have my whole Zotero library. You don't need that. Um, and so try using this. Once you see this video, that is not going to work anymore, but you'll have your own one and you can use your own Zotero library. Now, um, again, select this, copy this over into here, and then we're almost ready to go. Um, to recap really quickly, we have our API key from Zotero. We have our um, user ID to put it into the data URI field. And for the params um, thing here in, in this line, I'm going to leave this empty. This is going to get you your whole Zotero library inside Rome. Now, then you scroll down a little bit um, and we'll cover the funk map um, thing in a bit. That's going to be a bit more finicky. But um, one important thing is that you can set shortcuts for using the extension. And um, the way this works is that down here you say which keys should be pressed together um, to give you the search panel and the quick copy panel and i'm going to go over those in a second what i do want to point out though right now is that depending on what operating system you are using um, and what browser sometimes things are a little bit weird and personally I'm on Mac OS and I had to figure out and thanks to Alex the developer of this extension for for helping me figure this out um, you need to put the right key combination in right and so to toggle the search panel for your Zotero stuff inside Rome the shortcut usually is the alt key plus p now on mac when you press alt and p together you actually get pi and so you need to actually put pi in here um, for this to work now why am i mentioning this a you might be on mac os and b this is very likely also going to be helpful if you're using international keyboards or anything else where the key layout orientation might be a bit different. And I'm going to link a very handy tool below the video where you can go and see, okay, when I press Alt and whatever key um, together, what the computer actually sees, which you can then put in here. Um, and for C, for example, I also need this C with a little uh, tail at the bottom um, for this to work, right? So just a quick aside on setting up um, the shortcuts. And that's all there is to it um, for now. What we can do now is click the big red button. Yes, I know what I'm doing. Um, you need to be aware that when you enable JavaScript in your Rome database, um, that will give the extension access to your graph. And depending on what information you have in your graph, that might be a bit scary, right? And so you either need to understand JavaScript or you need to trust the developer not to do um, bad things um, with your database. I have read what I could from the code. Alex um, is awesome. Uh, she's fantastic. So I do trust her, but um, you need to decide that for yourself. Um, no legal warranties involved in me recommending 
uh, this extension. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click yes or no what I'm doing and this is going to create a little button up here that shows a little book icon and I'm going to show you what happens um, not with the empty demo library I'm going to um, hide this here a little bit and my personal stuff um, for my own library and then I can show you how that works with actual data. All right, we're now on a different page and I've put my own credentials into the extension and now when I click this book icon at the top it's going to turn orange and that's going to download your whole Zotero library into the background of your own um, graph. You have to do that every time you reload Roam um, and so it's not going to be permanently stored in your Roam graph, it's just going to be available to the Roam app um, once you click that button and eventually it turns green and now it means um, the extension and the data is ready. All right, so what can we do with it? Let me show you. When we are in a block and I'm hitting Alt P slash Pi, um, you get this search field. And here I can search for papers I have in my library. So I'm looking for Getty's 2014 um, autocratic, right? Autocratic breakdown and regime transitions, new data set. Um, and this gives me a view of all the information um, that there is. And then I can either click with a mouse on import metadata or hit um, Alt I in my case, um, because this paper doesn't have a page yet in the graph. So I do this and what I then do is I copy the Psyche, right? The Gettys 2014 Autocratic. And I go out of um, the search panel and let's look at that page. Um, and ta-da, all the information is here, right? So we have the title, we have all the authors with their individual pages beautifully linked we have a type, we know it's a paper, um, we have a publication, um, we have when this was added to the Zotero library. Also, uh, we have links to the local library and the web library. So if I click local library, um, this is going to open Zotero and it's going to jump directly to that paper in my um, Zotero um, app and I can open the PDF, right? Just one click, all taken care of. Also, if you have any tags for a paper inside Zotero, those will also be transferred and included um, in the page here. Now, the other cool thing you can do is that when you have quick copy enabled, um, which you can see up here and for which you can also define a shortcut is that when you search for a source and you hit enter um, you get the site key just itself right and that's super useful when you're um, just writing along um, in your own graph and you want to use the side key to later have things nicely formatted um, in your text um, that you can quickly search for the right side key by author name, by title or whatever um, and that makes accessing things super super easy. So that's the two um, big things you can do with this Zotero extension um, for Rome. What you can also do 
um, and which I'm going to cover in um, a blog post linked um, below this video is how you can edit the way um, the metadata is put into your graph, right? So here we have everything as attributes to the page um, name, but there's certain things you can do that change that. For example, if you always want to have the publication as its own page so that you can see all the pa papers that um, appeared in one journal, that's something you can edit. And I'm going to show you how that works um, in a blog post, again, linked below this video. You can also get help if you want. Um, that's going to be linked below this video, of course, um, a page where you can find all the relevant information as well as a link to a place where you can ask questions. Um, and I think I'll hang out there as well and see whether I can answer people. Um, and that's what we have in a nutshell. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you found that useful. Click the like and subscribe buttons below if you want to see more videos like this showing up in your feed. Um, also share this video with your friends in academia. Um, I think using Zotero together with Rome Research is quite the powerful combination. Um, also leave a comment below if um, you have any more questions. If anything wasn't quite clear in um, the way I covered things. Very happy to answer. Also, um, follow me on Twitter at Cortex Futura, um, also linked below the video, and talk to you soon.